Hi, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. Tim Mahoney, tuning technician. Today we're gonna to go into the details of soot accumulation. Soot accumulation is important because it tells the story of how happy the truck is at a certain performance level. Why is that, Tim? Overall long longevity. When you say longevity, what are we talking about here? Talking about uh, not only how you drive the truck every day, but how long the truck's gonna last, you know, mileage you're gonna incur between you know, oil changes, gas fill-ups, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot. It is a lot. So I, let's, let's take it into pieces. You talked about uh, Oil changes. Yeah. Right. So, one of the things driving oil change distance is emission system performance. Yeah. So we're talking about frequency between regens. A lot of soot accumulation versus not a lot of soot accumulation. How does that impact regen? So it's pretty simple, right, Nick? The more soot you accumulate, the more it's going to regen. The less soot you accumulate, the less it's going to regen. All right. I like that. Regens. We don't really like regens, right? No. We mm -hmm. want to go longer distances between regens. That's the factory's goal. That's our goal. Longer distance between regens means better mileage, better oil life, better emission system life. And ideally, I don't want to know when the truck is regening when I'm driving it. I'm I want you. to be able to, to go throughout my day. If I'm towing to the track or towing across the country, I don't want to know when it's regening. I just want to keep driving. Exactly. You don't want messages on your dash no, telling you. No, no messages. <laughs> All right. So when we're tuning the truck, we want to maintain that same interval. Yeah. Yeah. Or better, right? Or better. I like that. I like that even better. So there's some common misconceptions about tuning emissions equipped trucks and that adding a lot of horsepower, you have to add a lot of soot accumulation. Yeah. You've been on the dyno. How, what do you, how do you feel about that? So the biggest thing here, Nick, is air fuel ratio and the lamb to control these trucks, right? Okay. So you can add a lot of power to the truck. You can make them very smoky, you know, like YouTube says to go and do. <laughs> Not necessarily the greatest thing, but no. what you can also do is you can take, you know, and you can add 80 horsepower to the truck and maintain or have better air fuel ratio than factory using the factory controllers, which we're able to do with our custom tuning, while also adding that performance, that power, that miles to the gallon, that drivability that you're looking for. Okay, okay, so the message here is using the controls, we can control air fuel ratio. We don't have to make a smoky truck. Yeah. We don't have to get crazy soot accumulation. Yeah. So we've taken what the factory guys have done and we've built off of it. I like it. All right, so my goal when I'm talking to a customer about a tuned truck is to be able to tell them we can add this much power and the truck is not going to regen any more frequently than it did stock. Yeah. Or it's going to regen less. Yep. But how do we show that to the customer? How do we show that? So we sent you into the dyno room. We did. And said, we don't did. come back out until you can show us that. Pretty much, pretty much. So what we did was uh, we came up with a test and what better truck to use than the L5P, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of been, you know, the talk of the town, so to speak, as far as, as, far as the diesel tuning platform. Exactly. So what we did was our seven second power sweep test window. Yeah. So load the truck up, get it in our gear. This, this truck particularly we tested in fifth gear. Okay. Very simple power test, right? Same truck, customer comes in on the dyno, what does my truck make? Same test. 2350 to 3200 power test. Exactly, okay. exactly. So get the truck hot, and again, we talked about this before, with soot accumulation, we wanna make sure the truck's hot and we want all the tests to be the same. So okay. simple as it can be, we get the truck up to temperature and we start with, with our stock file. All right, so you're running the stock file and you're doing a, a bunch of hits and you're recording start soot load, and to soot load. Yeah. And you're letting things kind of normalize in between the tests. Exactly. And I let the truck idle down after the test, you know, not just idle down, you know, speed down after the test. And uh, the other thing to point out is we are actually measuring horsepower as well. Okay. So we're getting our horsepower, our torque, our torque, and we're getting our soot accumulation between the tests. I like so it. what we came up with was we'll do three tests for each power window. Okay. So each power window being stock power level, three tests there. Then we did our tow tune three tests there, then we did our, our sport economy tune as we call it, our, our, what the current max effort tune is for this truck. Sure, so stock tune, you run it three tests, you do your, your, your cycle, right? So you let yep. the truck normalize between tests and you're measuring starting soot, ending soot. Yep. And as a, just for you guys watching at home, the L5P looks at soot levels as a percentage. So between one and 100%, regens at 100%. Yep. So you're starting, 
What's the average, man? How much percentage do you gain on a, on a, on a wide open throttle run for seven seconds? For your bone stock truck, 3%. 3%, 3%. across the board. Okay. So every time you trounce the throttle for seven seconds in fifth gear and run that thing up to 100 miles an hour. Yep. Which, is, which is probably more than the end user is ever going to do. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty aggressive test. Okay. I remember taking this truck out on our first 80 horsepower, 100 horsepower tune and beating the shit out of it. and seeing the soot level come up from more than three percent yeah yeah and I, I remember thinking hey, yeah this isn't good i think we were really excited about the numbers the power the drivability yeah. and uh we definitely need to take a step back all of a sudden it was like the catalyst is not happy the dpf is not happy so so <laughs> we had the mechanics put an air fuel ratio gauge in the truck yep and we took the truck out and started to watch what was going on on the street yeah and it became pretty obvious from there that our air fuel ratios were yeah. aggressive. So part of the task to you was keep the power, keep the drivability, yep. but fix that yeah. <laughs> air fuel ratio, yeah. right? Um, talk about how you did that. So the great thing about diesels, right? Black smoke, awesome. Not necessarily great on these trucks. So we can take that away because all that is is the excess fuel, right? Mm -hmm. We take that away, we can still make the power. Okay. But we have to find that limit of taking it away, still making power, and the truck falling on its so face. Balance of drivability and stoichiometric control. Exactly. We use the internal sensors of the truck, but we also use that external Y-band. Okay. That's what really helped us dial in not only the air fuel ratio of the entire run or driving pass on the street, right? But that specific spot where the soot accumulation would build up. And most okay. of the time, that's a part throttle situation. Those little transient. It's, yep. It's not so much like the 30 pounds of boost, nope. 2,700 RPM trucks getting it. Nope. It's the... That's 1,600, 1,800. I'm just going to inch it to get around someone. Right. You know. Right. Where you would get the wisp of smoke out of the tailpipe yep. in a traditional truck. Yep. That's where you're cutting that bottom off. So you're on the dyno and you're running the, you're running the tow tune. Yeah. And what's the expectation? The expectation is 80 horsepower. How much more soot is that going to occur, right? Okay. Like we're adding this power, we're adding the drivability. Like you said, we were having some initial problems with the soot accumulation. The stock tune, power test, 3% every time. Yep. Tow tune, 80 horsepower. I can tell you on the street it wasn't 3% every time. No. In here, after you're working with our custom ECU programming, are you able to get there? Yeah, we are. We are. And not only able to get that on a tow test, but we were able to get it out of the, uh, the max effort tune as well on these trucks. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, talk to me about the, I looked at the data and I'm, I'm, I'm I was excited about it because I saw, you know, some of the tests started at 30%, some of the tests started at 80%, some of the tests started at 50%, and every time, 3%. Yeah. Logic, right? Logically, you're going to think 80% while wow, that DPF's getting full. Like, it's going to incur a lot of soot. Yeah, like fast. the truck isn't going to run as well yeah. here. And, and that's not what we found in our tests. So we saw the same power. We, we didn't only see the same soot accumulation numbers. We saw the same power numbers. Yeah, the power numbers were consistent. So if we tell you it's an 80 horsepower tune, it's an 80 horsepower tune at 20% DPF load. And it's an 80 horsepower tune at 85% DPF load. Yeah, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to hear it, Nick, but it's probably an 80 horsepower tune in regen. <laughs> hey, racing in regen. I mean, worst things have happened. Yeah, worst things have happened. All right, so I'm liking all the data that I'm hearing so far. I'm looking at the data on the sport tune, and I'm seeing over 550 rear wheel horsepower, significant gain over stock. Yeah. Can we go further? Why don't we push it further? Not reliably. Not something you're going to want to put your name on. Okay. So what, put it into words, why did you stop? Air fuel limit. Okay. Um, past that 550 horsepower limit or so, we, we call it in, in what we sell to the customer, right? Yeah. Um, it's, we're out of usable air, okay. the air fuel ratio. Okay. So we're pushing the turbocharger too hard. We're running the truck too fat. Yes, it will make more power. No, it won't do it for 100,000 miles yeah. is what we're saying. We're starting to get back to that limit where we first talked about. We took it out on the street. It was great power, yeah. but it's okay. not something you're going to want to drive home every day. Okay. Well, I can tell you that 550 horsepower to the tire is a pretty fun truck. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you also that it's pretty near the long-term limit of the transmission. 
which is kind of interesting. Yeah, <laughs> 12, 1300 foot pounds of torque is, it's no joke. We saw taking the, we, we pushed this one further yeah. and we saw taking the transmission apart that we'd started glazing some of the clutch bags. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think not only is it a smart limit air fuel ratio wise, but probably a smart limit transmission wise. Yeah. So I know in the time we took to do this test and design this test and go through with it, yeah. that we tried to take into account everything we could. Yeah. But there are some variables that might impact the data that... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, first off, we did do the test on the same day. We ran the truck on the same day, same air temp, stuff like that. So I would like to take that out of the equation, but sure. you still got, you know, operating temp of the truck. Okay. We did let, you know, we talked about bringing it up to operating temp, but not necessarily the same every not time. Not necessarily everybody's going to do that. I yeah. mean, it's possible that someone's going to run their truck abusively when it's cold, and this yeah. test not, might not represent that. Yeah. It's same with high altitude. I mean, yeah. Our lambda control should account for that, and that should work, but it's possible that there's a limit there because we are here in Illinois yeah. and we are on the same day. Yeah. Um, I would say driver. So if you're doing something like really out of the ordinary, yep. I was going to use the word stupid, but yeah. everybody drives their truck differently. Put Hager in the truck and, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're stuck in a mud pit or maybe you're manually holding the truck in a certain gear and lugging it to a yeah. point where, you know, beyond where we would have. All right, so those are all fair things to consider. Yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> I think this is a pretty awesome test. Yeah. I think it says with, with authority that this is a reliable tune set that you can use, that you can run hard, that you don't have to worry about. Yeah. Uh, and you can expect good reliability out of the truck yeah. as well as awesome performance. I mean, you do some traveling, you, right? You'd pack the wife and kids in there and... I want a truck I can count on, yeah. right? I'd, I will sacrifice an extra 30 horsepower up top from, to not smoke my trans yeah. and to have something that'll last me 100,000 clean miles yep. without having to worry about. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Diesel Insights on soot accumulation. I'm Nick Pregnitz. Tim Mahoney. Catch you next time.